Good morning, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We are at 9031 North Chicago Avenue here in Portland. We are located at the rearmost unit here on the, uh, I describe everything as if you're standing out in the street facing into the property in general. Um, it's just easier to describe it this way. I mean, if you were to stand facing the front door, we are as far to the left of the front door as you can possibly go um, until you reach the seam between this house and the one adjacent to it. Three inch ABS clean out. We're gonna check the overall condition, serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Water is running. We're gonna zero out here. My camera's got a little bit of a glitchiness to it right now. Hopefully that doesn't translate to the video recording. All right, so we do have a belly in the sewer line here, it looks like. We're gonna revisit that on the way out. And on new construction, I dial my, my nitpickiness up a bit for standing water issues. You know, the average sewer line out there, your average used home, and this is something I've developed after 13 years of scoping sewer lines and about 25,000 sewer scopes. Um, where I typically start to consider repairs is once there is a five foot section of pipe with at least one inch of water in it. Um, that's with no water running at all. Now that's where I start to consider repairs. I don't recommend a repair on every single one of those. Um, it, a lot of it depends on the configuration of the line and some other factors. Proximity to the house, lots of different stuff. How much buildup's in the line, you name it. So on, but being that it's a brand spanking new, never lived in home, I knock that back quite a ways. Um, I start to recommend repairs on things when you're even starting getting into the half inch realm. Um, anything more than that, you know, a quarter inch I can live with, 16th of an inch, 32nd of an inch, whatever. Uh, once you start to get over that, it's a situation where, in my opinion, it should be corrected. It's brand new and it should look brand new, or by and large should. So that does not mean that a blockage will happen there every day of the week by any stretch of the imagination. Bellies, especially ones that are, that are of, of that size, and again, that's not a big belly. That's a, that's a pretty small belly. Um, you know, they still have the potential to cause issues, especially if the line is not being treated very nicely. Hitting the uh, transition here to 3034 PVC pipe. Uh, but the other thing you run into is, you know, turn around and sell the house a couple years later and, you know, it becomes a, a, a sticking point or an issue during the sale process, which is the last thing you want to be dealing with with a, with a house that's basically brand spanking new. So, anyway, we'll take a look at that on the way out when the line's fully drained. We'll see how much water's left over in it. Um, you know, if it drains out to where it's around like the quarter inch level, what I often will recommend... Um, rather than repairs, because a quarter inch of standing water, about the only scenario you're ever gonna get a blockage occurring is under abusive scenarios. Um, however, brand new construction homes, generally speaking, most lines, if they're gonna settle, they're gonna settle almost immediately after being buried. Um, but sometimes they progressively shift. They're, they've been in the ground for such a short period of time, you just don't know if it's gonna stay that way or get worse. So at the very least, you wanna rescope the line at about nine months, 10 months into that one year warranty, give the line a chance to sit for a while um, and then rescope it. And if you see any progression at all at that point, you know, let's say if it goes from a quarter inch to a half of an inch or a half an inch to three quarters of an inch or something of that nature, for example, um, that's where you, you wanna get it, it corrected because you don't know if it's gonna progressively settle more than that. So anyway, we've hit the main here in total, you're about 117 feet to the main. I backed it up just a little bit here to get out of the hard dive so I can locate properly. We're gonna go find the camera head and then we'll pull back once the line's drained. All right, located the camera head successfully. Line terminates out on North Chicago Avenue. So again, as you are oriented, standing in the street facing toward this property in general, I'm referring to the frontmost unit as the front of the building. Uh, this unit in particular, 9031, would be the rear of the building. Um, there, you know, the, the front door to this building, for instance, I would refer to as basically the rear right corner, essentially. So off that orientation, um, the line runs up the right side of the building out towards the street. Once the line gets just past the front right corner of the building or front right corner of the frontmost unit, it starts to veer uh, from right to left and then right in front of the little window, there's a little window to the right of the uh, front door on that frontmost unit. The line turns and straightens out and shoots out of the street almost perfectly in line with that little window. 
So if you go out to the curb, the reason I'm describing that way, you'll see two green plastic curb markers out there um, on the street curb. Those mark um, <clears throat> where sewer lines and or storm drains sometimes will cross the curb. Usually they're re related to sewer. Um, the green plastic marker that is closest <clears throat> to this doorway is the one for the sewer line. There's another one way further over to the left that lines up more with the front left corner of that front unit there, the building in general. That's not the sewer line there that we're, we're in. All right, transition joint there looks tight, looks good. And when I say tight, I don't mean like uh, the cool words we used to use back in the early 90s. I mean like the joint is, uh, is sealed up tight. <clears throat> For anyone in the uh, millennial realm, that'll make sense to you. Anyway, that little turn right there is where the line rounds that front right corner of the building and goes to straighten out. And I apologize for kind of the, I don't know what's going on here, why the camera is kind of glitchy like that. At least on my end, it keeps pausing up every now and then. It's not affecting my view of anything. It's just, I don't know if that'll translate to the video recording or not. Sorry if it does. <clears throat> and one thing to check on here, sounds like it's already kind of underway, um, but is to look into how responsibility is divvied up in the event a repair is necessary or a blockage occurs, let's say. You know, a line like this, theoretically, your neighbor does have the opportunity to actually cause problems for you if they're abusing the sewer line. You know, if you've got a neighbor up ahead that's dumping a lot of improper stuff down the line, um, they can indeed cause a blockage that can affect more than one unit. You know, the frontmost unit, for instance, if, if all three are tied together, in fact, that front unit may actually be using that other green or that other markers that I'm talking about. I'm trying to recall if I saw a Y connection up that far out. I do believe we have one back in here though for the unit in the middle of the building. But anyway, in the event a blockage occurs, especially one after the Y connections or where they're shared <clears throat> to where it's affecting more than one unit, you know, how how you split the bill on drain cleaning or if a repair is ever needed or something like that. Just so you understand all that good stuff. You know, this line, this thing might be completely independent. I can see where the neighbor's clean out is just up the way here. push back out here really quick. So that's the belly. And I guess on that note, let's take a look at that real fast here. So it dissipates off there at about six feet. And I noticed coming back through it, it drained off much nicer than I thought it was going to. We probably had more than one fixture running there. Is probably why that looked more significant at the start. So this belly here, that water line isn't even quite touching my camera lens. And I'll even account for the fact <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> excuse me, my camera may have sloshed a little water out of that thing. Um, at its worst, you might have a quarter inch of water here. That's not significant enough in my opinion, even for new construction uh, to go tearing stuff up here. It just, it's way too minor. That has no bearing on functionality at all. But I do recommend rescoping just before the warranty's up to make sure no progression takes place. Uh, a belly that small, it, it is, if you're blocking and backing up out of a belly that tiny, you are putting some wild and crazy things down your sewer line. You have no business going down there. Realistically, even when you start getting into the inch mark, in plastic pipe anyway, uh, that smooth pipe does a great deal to keep build up down, uh, especially in bellied areas. But uh, even when you have scenarios where, um, and I've cameraed thousands and thousands of bellies over the years, been back to a lot of bellies that I did recommend repairs on and didn't get fixed and vice versa. Um, <clears throat> and what I have found is that bellies in plastic pipe, even when they're quite significant, generally speaking, they act up when the homeowner makes it act up. And by that, I mean abusing the sewer line. So we have, we have a tie-in there 
Okay, there's a Y right here at the top of the pipe too. Which I, it's hard to say if that's a test Y connection. That is likely though. Okay, there, I've seen enough Y connections now that it does appear that all three could be tied into this thing. Um, it's also very possible that one of those may have been a clean out access. The builder would be able to shed some light on that. I'd have to have access to all the units to run water <clears throat> to verify what each one of those is. Um, at the very front right corner of the building uh, in the bark dust, kind of kitty corner off that front right corner, I have seen two clean outs there, two ABS plastic clean outs sticking out of the dirt. And then adjacent to it is a clean out in the concrete patio for that front unit. So there's, there's plenty of stuff over there um, some of those Y connections or tie-ins there could have been a clean out. One of them is likely at least a sewer line tying in. The other's probably a clean out. Being that there's, there's two different curb markers out there. I've seen it before where they tie two of the three lines together, you know, and then one of them has its own separate sewer line or they divvy the building up into parts and pieces and you've got a couple lines on each. In this case, you only have three units, so. Anyway, the builder could probably tell you who all is tied into the line. But as we sit here today, that belly is far too minor, in my opinion, to require repairs. It's gonna look a little bit more significant right now because water's moving through the line. Dishwasher is discharging. But make sure you get that thing re-scoped around nine months to make sure it does not, it has not progressed. Generally, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 when I come back about a year later, it looks exactly the same. Most settling happens almost instantaneously after a line is buried. Sometimes it'll settle in the next few days um, to a week. Usually the only times you're gonna get really truly progressive settling issues um, is when you have bad pipe joints where the, where the line is open to the ground and it starts to suck dirt and groundwater through which hydro roads will support out from underneath the sewer line. So these lines have most likely been in the ground for a while, so I don't, I don't suspect or predict that you're going to see any changes. But it's worth checking on because that's not a, you know, if it does start moving around on you, that's, that's something you can put back on the builder at that point. That's thousands of dollars to correct. Anyway, good flow all the way to the main lateral. All the ABS and PVC pipe we just scoped here, all of it's in good condition, intact, has good flow, clean of any construction debris sewer line is functioning properly at this time. And again, the belly from about two to six feet there, holding somewhere between a 16th and a quarter inch of water at maximum, is far too minor in my opinion, even for new construction to recommend repairs. That's, it's just too tiny to justify repair and something like that. The only thing you'll get consistently hanging up in standing water that minor um, is if you're putting a, a fairly large amount of cooking oil and grease down the line on a consistent basis. Grease will build up anywhere in a sewer line, but it especially likes to do so when it hits any amount of water. It cools down, hardens up, floats to the top of the water, and sticks to the sidewalls. So if you're not feeding any, anything like that to the line, improper stuff, um, and a belly that tiny would require consistent abuse. It, it's not just going to cause a problem from abusing it here and there. Not that you should do that, but a belly that small would handle abuse about as easily as anywhere else in the line that has proper or completely proper slope and grade, just so you know. Anyway, sewer line is functioning properly at this time. 